Okay. Um, oops. Okay, um, just wanted to share one one scripture, uh, something that is, um, and something that we know, <clears throat> right? Uh, Colossians chapter three and verse um, seventeen, right? Colossians three, verse seventeen it says, um, "And whatever you do, okay, whatever you do in word or deed." Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Okay, I think there's a lot of wisdom in that. A lot of uh, guidelines to to walk, um, you know, to walk as led by the Spirit. You know, whatever you do, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Again, verse 23, and whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not to men. I think these through two verses um, like combine a lot of wisdom, comes packed in a lot of um, lot of guidelines for walking right, walking uprightly. Right? If we would just remind ourselves, okay, I'm doing something. Can I do it in the name of the Lord? Right? Can I do it in the name of the Lord Jesus? Because it says, whatever you do, do it in the name of the Lord. Can I do this in the name of the Lord? Will this glorify God? Will this honor him? Can I do it, you know, in in his name, meaning like uh, with the authority and in his place, representing him, right? And then verse twenty three. Whatever you do, do it heartily, which means wholeheartedly, as not unto men but unto the Lord Himself. Okay, so this these two verses just want to remind us that um, that if we would hold on to these. Or these nuggets of wisdom, then we would be walking upright. Then there'll be, uh, I think, there will be less confusion, right? Um, we all want to know, okay, what is the right way? What should I do? Right? But even before that, as a precursor to that, a foundation to that would be to have this written in our hearts and say, okay, as far as uh, uh, you know, my my knowledge goes, or as far as what I can understand, let me do this, right? So let's pray and say, God. You know, you lead me, you remind me, you lead me, and I want to keep these two verses, Colossians three seventeen and Colossians three twenty three, um, in my heart. God. Father, we we just thank you for this day, Lord. Even as we come to your presence, Lord, we um, we thank you for this exhortation from these scriptures, Lord. Yes, they are indeed life giving. They are spirit and they are life, Lord. Your word, and Master, we. We ask, O oh Father God, that um, that we will practically walk in this, that you will enable us to walk in this, Father God, that enable us to do all in your name, Father God. Enable us to do heartily whatever we do as unto you, Father God. And may we see the <clears throat> fruit of that, Lord, daily in our lives. Yes, Master, to this end, we commit ourselves into your mighty hands. In Jesus' master's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, so people, we're dealing with people. <clears throat> so yeah. So the, you know, one of the things um, that we need to understand, that we need to come to terms with, is that ministry is about people, right? People, um, and that is why. Um, God so loved the world and sent Son into the world, sent Jesus to die for us. That is why the Great Commission is going to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. It is because of people. People are in God's heart, and uh, so also, <clears throat> you know, we when we as leaders or ministers, you know, we need to have people in our hearts, right? Uh, so the the challenges are many. Uh, we need to, you know, uh, we need to. Uh, learn to relate 
the right manner to all kinds of people right mature immature <clears throat> you know people ignorant knowledgeable whatever young old we need to be able to relate to people in order to work with people right so um, like somebody said um, 15% of success in any job if you take it, it's related to the you know the technical skill that you might have okay i need to, i can do the job well like you know be it a programmer be it a, you know any technical work or or anything you can think of if say 15 to 20% is the knowledge of the work or how they get the job done but the balance <clears throat> uh, 70 uh, 85% or 80% is because of how they can relate to people right like some people can be very highly skilled but totally you know uh, unable to relate to people like for example this particular you know this is last night i went to this um, this iron man iron man meaning not marvel iron man but <laughs> you know ironing you know to to get this clothes clothes pressed right so I just went there and um, you know there there are there are two iron men you know i meet with, uh, especially when i have a lot of clothes to iron you know so one person is like at the end of the day you know he doesn't care whether you bring 10 clothes 20 clothes he says nah, today i can't do it yeah okay, and i ask you know it's it's still not closing time why you know you you, you give me tomorrow he says no 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 you you come tomorrow i can't do it right there is there is one guy the other guy He's a, he's a good guy. He does ironing well. Again, same problem, right? Uh, he says, uh, no, I, I can give you only after two, three days, you'll say. And then uh, that's it. He'll just turn around and go back and do his work. So both these guys are highly skilled. But when it comes to people, when it comes to relating to people, uh, you know, they are they're very bad. So, um, so something that we learn is that they, you know, they might be filling a need. They might be having the technical knowledge. They might be providing solutions, but if we are unable to relate to people, same thing in ministry. Like we might be highly gifted, skilled, etc., um, you know, anointed and all, but then we need to be able to work with people, have people in our hearts, right? Okay. So in ministry, we work with people, we learn from others, uh, we we are gifted and anointed to serve one another, right? We disciple others, and that's nothing but you know people. And uh, and God has given us the fivefold ministry, which we see in Ephesians 4, to equip the saints for the work of ministry. So let's look at um, five principles. Okay, five principles, uh, a set of things that that we can repeat, that we can do, and uh, and let's see. You know, these five principles actually enable us to prepare ourselves in order to relate to people. Okay, the first one. Uh, so this is this is adapted from John C. Maxwell's book. Uh, the first one is called the lens principle, meaning how do we see ourselves? Okay, I'm sure as children we we've, we've used we've used these glasses. You know, like uh, it'll have rose-colored lens, uh, pl plastic glasses. You go to exhibition or somewhere. You know, they'll give you some green color, red color, and the whole world looks green. The whole world looks red, you know, whatever color the glass is, right? So the lens principle is, how do you see yourself? Okay, it's nothing but, you know, uh, about the, 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 the in Christ truth, right? How do you see yourself? Because if you see yourself as superior, if you see yourself as someone who is, uh, you know, better than everyone else, then the way we relate to people will be based on that. Yeah. So we will we will treat others shabbily. We will think that you know these guys don't know anything. But if we if we look at ourselves as inferior, meaning you know everyone knows everyone is better than me. I am nothing. Okay. If you consider yourself to be inferior, then also the way you relate to people will be it's going to be different, right? So you might act, say something in order to you know, show people that are you actually you're not inferior. You, know, you might constantly be fighting. You might constantly be saying things, doing things, um, just to show people, hey, I'm actually good. You know, because inside we are thinking, I'm I'm not good. I'm not good enough. 
um, I'm not skilled enough. I don't have the qualifications inside. You're thinking that way. So constantly we're trying to prove to others. You know, maybe somebody says something and you say something better than that. Somebody gives some, you know, some some information and you say, actually, it is like this. You say something, you know, two things, three things more than that because you want to feel better. Right. So, so the lens principle actually uh, influences how we relate to others. If you look at you know how people interact with you, how people we interact with people, if you introspect, you'll see that okay, this is this is really what it is, right? So it is very important that we base our image, you know, that we change our lens. Maybe the lens that we are using is is not really giving us the right focus. It means the way we look at ourselves, maybe it's not correct. Okay. And the best place to go is the Word of God. And the best person to go is the Lord Himself, who will correct and bring focus to how He sees us. And the minute we see ourselves the way He sees us, then the way we relate to others will dramatically change, you know, completely change. Right. Um, so we will not be you know, putting down others. We will not be, um, you know, maybe overextending ourselves in order to please others. We will not be people pleasers. We will not be you know, people who will put down ourselves constantly in front of people. We will not do anything of that sort because we are seeing ourselves in the right way. Okay. So the first thing is that you know, sometimes we think, okay, you know, how does my, the way I look at myself, how does that help in relating to people? That goes a long way. And that's a big thing. Okay. Right. What is the second thing? Second thing is also that uh, it's something similar to this, right? Is it's called the mirror principle. Okay, so lens is it gives a clear focus on who we are. A mirror shows again who we are, right? We look at ourselves and we see the image of ourselves, right? Um, meaning that we must be self-aware, what our strengths are, what our weaknesses are, desires are, what our motivations are. Okay. The psalmist says this, right? He prays this. He says, um, Psalm 139, 23, 24. He says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties, and see if there is any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. So, you know, sometimes certain things about us, it's actually hidden, right? It's hidden. We don't, we don't understand. We don't, we don't really know. We think that, hey, this is, this is perfectly fine. But then the Lord says, no. There are some things that that needs to change that are hidden, right? Um, like in physics, you learn something called strength of material, right? Which means that certain material, certain metals, when they check the strength of it, let's say you know they want to make a rocket, okay, or a satellite, they want to, you know, a launch into space. Now they need to make sure that the metal is the strongest quality possible, okay? Why? Sorry, it, it could melt because of the heat. It, there's a lot of pressure acting on it, and because of that, it could crumble. And it will be dangerous if there are people in it, right? There's costly equipment, expensive equipment there. And if there are people, it will be dangerous because if there is a crack, then the oxygen escapes, and uh, you know the person inside is not able to breathe, right? So it becomes. Uh, any fault or any weakness in the metal uh, is dangerous, right? But the thing is, the metal could look strong. Like if you look at, you know, let's say, you know, the legs of the table, which are uh, iron, cast iron, right? It, it seems strong. But let's say if it is rusted on the inside, okay? If it is even a little bit rusted on the inside, then the strength is compromised, right? The strength is reduced because it is eaten away. Because of the moisture, right? same thing, you know, in a in a rocket or something. The the what they do is find out if there is a fault in the metal inside. You know, I don't know what they use, what technology to see if there is any, you know, any vacuum, any air bubble when it was actually cast, right? When it was actually molded to see that if anything like that is there, then it's not going to stand the pressure. It's not going to withstand the heat. Okay, so. When we look at ourselves, we see a picture, but the Lord knows what we need to change about ourselves. 
okay so um so the thing is this the mirror principle is again getting a true picture being self aware okay what does being self aware mean about yeah about yourself but what aspect of yourself right um Mm -hmm. what is our potential what what we are capable of mm hmm hmm yeah just awareness of who we are um you know like for example uh, this little nephew of mine he was i think he was about he's grown up now but he's 3 years 4 years like if you see a child of that age you know they are some they sometimes behave badly right they throw a tantrum they are in a bad mood they saying no i don't want to eat they are and the thing is they are maybe throwing things they are you know not responding to your whatever you're saying and you find out that they are not able to understand what is actually going on inside of them right maybe they are missing their parents who's not there or maybe they are hungry or maybe they are sleepy right they want to rest but they are not aware of all these things so they get very moody they are not able to communicate this is what is happening to me right so they become angry they become upset they throw these things they doing all these things because they are not self aware of that age, at that age right now what would happen if we are self aware we would know okay i need some rest now okay maybe if, if i just take a nap for about 30 minutes i'll be fine right or maybe i i need to drink something i you know i i'm hungry right now and that's because of which i'm feeling all this maybe i'll just drink some water let's say you know um, till till i can get something to eat right something like that right so you're aware and also you're aware of what your strengths are right it is a you know it is a right estimation of yourself which doesn't mean that you know if if you if you're aware that okay um you know i i don't have these gifts i don't have these abilities that doesn't mean that you look down upon yourself okay let's say you know you you're thinking okay i i can't paint i'm not an artist that doesn't mean that you look down on yourself right it's just that you appreciate the other person who does that and you don't get into those areas right if somebody asks and says hey uh, can you do this he say hey, this is not my area of strength unless i am i work at it i get better at it then maybe i can you know i can get into this area right so i don't want to get into this area let someone else get into this area because i know it's a correct estimation of myself and i see that that strength needs to be developed in that area okay i'm not going to put down myself but i'm i i'm going to say that you know strength needs to be developed so i'm not there yet so you know so the so that's the mirror principle so if we would understand that um if we would be self aware then we would relate to people better you know just that like that example of that child you know if you understand that okay uh, i'm actually a little upset right now right then you would not uh, you know you would not behave badly or you would not when you interacting with people you'll be a little careful right uh, with your words you would be careful with your actions okay okay any questions lens principle mirror principle okay the third one is something called the pain principle okay so that means that when people are hurting they tend to hurt others okay so which means if you are hurting well till you come to that place of your hurt or your pain being relieved of that or healed of that then the thing is that if somebody is there to inflict more pain you will hurt others we will hurt others okay so which means that you know hurt people hurt people right hurt people hurt people because they are hurt they they hurt others right um and it could and it's a thing you know you you see that uh, you know even with animals you know if something is it could be the most wonderful pet you know pet dog or cat or whatever you have but if it's got some wound and you go and try and pet it right it's got some wound you try and pet it 
it lashes back like it's, it scratches you or bites you or because it is hurt it's in pain right so the thing is that um, yeah so the the proportion to which we respond will not be you know in equal proportion in the sense when we are when we are when everything is fine and if somebody says something against you somebody says something about you you will just brush it off you'll just keep going that you maybe even laugh at it and go but if you are hurting if you are already upset if you're on a bad mood and if someone says something then the way you respond to it is not in response to what they said you know and that person himself or herself will be upset, will be shocked you know why is he shouting why is she re responding this way the fact is that they are already going through some hurt and therefore they they are they not processed it they've not come to terms with it therefore whatever provocation they re they retaliate they respond and the response is not in proportion to whatever that person said right you understand right okay so uh, if there are unsolved issues um, then we won't be able to objectively look at people assess people we won't be able to ob objectively look at ourselves so in effect this hampers or this hinders the way we relate to people okay so as a way to prepare um, ourselves to deal with people we need to that's why you know we when you look at the inner wholeness class we, you know we're saying that we need to heal from these hurts we need to deal with these hurts we can't just let them be unresolved because it's going to affect our interaction with people you know it could be people closest to us it could be people you know uh, who are you know whom we are working with in our team ministry whatever the thing is we can actually hide it for some time right and uh, it it's it's possible we can hide it for some time we can we can do that but eventually it is it will just come out right eventually it will come out because we can't be hiding we cannot be always careful all the time so the mask comes off and then we you know we respond right so uh, so the thing is this that we need to um, you know deal with our own hurts okay now the question is how do we deal when others and others who are hurting hurt us so that's the thing right so we need to look at that also objectively you know why is this person behaving like this right they are usually okay But why are they doing this you know are they hurt in some way are they have they got something um you know going on in their lives because of which they are saying this they are doing this or they are not saying anything they are not doing what they are supposed to be doing right so um, we can actually look at people and say objectively see okay beyond their words beyond uh, their hurts and see okay what is the actual problem okay so while you know we can, we may not be able to solve the problem we can actually suggest to them hey there is a problem that needs to be resolved right okay so so these are some you know very uh, basic practical things um which we which we need to consider when we these are like a foundational thing right when we need to consider when we relating to other people okay the fourth one is something called the hammer principle okay, this is also uh in relation with what we looked at earlier the pain principle it's like the hammer principle in the sense you know when you want to when you want to hit a mosquito what do you use you just use your hand you use maybe a paper mosquito bat <laughs> yeah but you will not use a hammer right you will not use something so heavy you will not use a chair you will not use a table <laughs> you know and it's like this the hammer principle is that why are we overreacting when somebody says something when somebody does something why is that overreaction happening right we need to we need to understand is it because of something that is pent up is it something because you know sometimes people say you know we we might be overhearing some conversation one, one guy says something the other guys say something and we're wondering what is happening why are they being so rude to each other you know because you, we don't understand but there is a history you know there is a history behind it you know maybe there are some old things some old rivalry some old uh, you know whatever hurt which is there 
between the two people and then comes the rudeness and we are, we, are, we you know we we kind of feel stuck in between right so the thing is you know how do we how do we deal with it okay um like maybe it is when we are dealing with others and then we feel that okay i feel like i've taken a hammer you know that person is doing something saying something i feel like i'm taking a hammer in the sense my response to that seems to be so strong or i want to be so strong just pause and think why am i feeling that way okay here are some things to help us okay the total picture you know what will help us is to get the total picture when somebody is saying something when somebody is giving a suggestion okay listen fully ask questions clarify and then respond okay so don't immediately jump the gun don't immediately pounce on them just listen clarify ask questions and then respond so that will help us not to go with the heavy hand okay? not to go with the hammer and just so what happens is okay we're trying to solve the problem we're trying to put things in place we're trying to hit the mosquito but we damage the person and right? we damage so that is what we call as collateral damage right and i remember watching one on 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 actually on comic strip where um, you know there were these two superheroes are fighting i think it's like superman and some villain they're fighting you know uh, not batman some some other you know they're fighting they're hitting and then you know one hit and then this guy goes falls into the building crashes the building you know that guy goes into saying so finally both of them are you know finish the fight they are standing and they look around it's all all buildings are down everything is a rubble you know people have left cars are all upturned you know their planes everything is because there's been collateral damage right there's been a lot of damage so when we go with a hammer we might hit the mosquito mosquito can be killed but there will be damage to the person damage to the environment more than the mosquito more than the solution right so so what will help us is to to get the total picture from the person okay what is it um ask okay second one you have a question okay yeah, you can probably yeah use the mic yeah if what we want to hit is not a fly but a wool sorry what what if what is what is like we said like we can't hit a fly with a hammer but what if what we want to hit is not a fly but it's like a wool big one big problem. it is a nail yeah uh -huh. what if it is <laughs> yeah then that's fine <laughs> yeah yeah so we we are going to look at that we are going to look at um, see one of the things that we need to in order to relate to people is also confrontation like so you're talking about confrontation like i need to so this problem requires a hammer <laughs> so how do i use the hammer and how do i use it in a healthy way right where the problem is solved but also you know hopefully we can just move on now hopefully you know there could be something some you know some corrective measure there could be some consequence that is what we are referring to as damage but how can we move on beyond that okay so we have what is called you know a, a confrontation a healthy confrontation we look at that right okay okay so total picture the second one is also timing you know act in a timely manner in the sense you think about it is this the right time to address it or you know sh should i should i wait sometimes waiting is not helping waiting is just building the problem right you're getting angry the other person is also getting uh, you know uh, angrier and it's not really helping so sometimes the time is now you know for us to act okay third thing is the tone okay so if somebody screams and you are tempted to scream back louder try try speaking softly try lowering your voice right uh try try even lowering your you know like they say you know go to the lower octave don't go don't go higher but go lower right <laughs> this it actually has a calming soothing effect right somebody shouting and they say hey, boss boss wait right yeah so uh, and then um the temperature temperature meaning if the reaction 
you know maybe there somebody is provoking but if your reaction is less than the action then the whole environment changes because the whole mood comes down right okay so if we need to do this you know if we need to we can, we can think of all these practical things but also you know we need to understand a lot of times we come with a heavy handed approach because we are also thinking of all the other times that person created the problem okay, you are interacting with the person you know the person you know all the times that you have said you know some five times six times 10 times you have said you have had this conversation and it is not it has not been good okay now the 11th time you are talking about the very same thing that the person should have corrected changed right so 10 plus 1 Eleven, you know, so that's the kind of, you know, intensity with which you normally address, right? So one thing to help is let this past stay in the past. Forget it. Yes, ten things have happened, ten times it has happened, but look at it. Look at this instance afresh, right? Second one is to ask a question. You know, is my reaction Okay, my reaction part of the problem. Okay, so have I contributed to the problem with my reaction? Okay, so that's also another thing. Now, the way I reacted, meaning I could have reacted sometimes not saying anything, or you know, where I'm supposed to is also a reaction, right? I was supposed to say something, I was supposed to do something, but I didn't do it. That is also a reaction right so is my reaction to whatever happened is it is did that contribute to the problem okay um also remember that actions are remembered long after words are forgotten so if words have led to action meaning could have been a you know, physically violent thing or maybe like you throw something like i remember Uh, my father once he was very angry for something he was we were all sitting at the table we were having dinner and he was uh, he was so angry about something that uh, we had the, he had he used to drink from this uh, you know stainless stainless not stainless steel i think it was a, more like a silver kind of a thing cup he just crushed it <laughs> he was so strong he was so angry and he just said something and he just crushed it now i don't know why he was angry okay they were, i remember then but i don't remember now whatever words were spoken i don't remember but that action is fresh in my mind right what was the action he just with one hand he crushed the tumbler okay and that is fresh in my mind it was so it just shows showed you know how ang angry he was how upset he was now i don't know why i forgotten it but that very act is still in my mind okay so that's what it is actions are remembered we forget why what what happened why but then everybody remembers why what we did they they'll forget the conversation they'll forget the context but they'll remember what we did so remember that right uh, when you're dealing with people and we are going with a hammer right never let the situation mean more than the relationship sorry there's a typo there more than the relationship okay um so that's i think self explanatory right so you consider the relationship um that doesn't mean you compromise on the truth right you consider the relationship deal with dignity um deal with honor because of the relationship right but which means truth has to be spoken consequences has to be there right if things are not done okay never let the situation mean more than the relationship with one treat the loved ones with treat your loved ones with unconditional love admit wrongs and ask forgiveness when you say unconditional love you're saying okay you know when there is forgiveness okay after i mean or when the situation when there's repentance and extend forgiveness right um, do not hold back do not bring back the past you know we we'll, some of these things will overlap in some of the topics that we're going to see in um, you know um so 
treat the loved ones with unconditional love, admit wrongs, and ask for forgiveness. Whatever wrongs are there from our side, we need to admit it. We cannot say, no, this is too, this is, this is a small thing. What I did was small thing. What I did was, what I said was small thing. If it was wrong, it was wrong. Right? So, what, however small it is, admit it. Because the, the tendency is we tend to compare that with the other person's wrong thing. If that was like 10 times bigger. So, this is nothing. You know, we try to justify it by saying, okay, this is insignificant compared to that. So, why should I admit it? No, if it is wrong and you know it's wrong, admit that. Okay. So, these things will help us to do what? Why are we studying this? Sorry? Yeah. Yeah, to help us to re start relating to people in a successful way, right? Um, because these are the very things that break down relationships, right? These are the very things that create problems, right? These are the things that we will have challenges like these, right? So if we would be, so this is like equipping ourselves beforehand, okay? I learn about this, I'm aware of this. And when the situation happens, I I get to use this and see the fruit of that, right? Okay. Any questions here? What if someone win people? Why should we win people? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's another viewpoint in the sense, uh, which means that we we don't, you know, we don't have God's heart for people. You know? Yeah, I mean, uh, like see, um, uh, there are some people mm. when when some some conference is, uh, is happening, when this pastor is uh, speaking about winning people hearts. So one of the guys is asking, uh, if if we are trying to be good to others, if people around around us are too toxic mm. uh, to just uh, just show their attitude and just want to want themselves to win to be in the higher place, what is the need to win people, or what is the need to be in a good relationship with them? On the other on the other perspective. We can be aware of our ourselves and we can be happy in our circle. Uh, what is the need? Hmm. So, so, so the situation could be, you know, like where, like you said, your circle. So what if there are people like that in your circle? In the sense, you know, sometimes it happens, right? You, maybe you're in a work situation. You don't, you know, there are people in your team who are like that. Or maybe, you know, ministry, and there are people like that in the church, right? So, so it, it happens. So, so how do, how do we relate to them, right? Irrespective of how they are, how do we relate to them? So this will actually help us to relate to them. Like this hammer principle, especially, and the pain principle helps us. You know, the truth is that something is wrong with them. And it could be because of something in their home, that they are reacting like this, they're behaving like this. Uh, maybe something to do with their marriage, maybe something to do with their parenting, something like that, you know. That's why, so an awareness of that helps us to respond in the right way. That doesn't mean we will not correct. That doesn't mean we will not spell out the consequences. You know, we're not saying that we're going to tolerate and we're just going to, you know, just keep going like that. No, there will be consequences. We need to share with them, right? Um, Especially if it is if it is a team, if it is t hurting the team, or if it is an organization and it's hurting the organization, uh, we need to tell them. You know, there is a price. You know, there is a cost. Everything comes at that. So, while uh, we will be understanding, we will try to help, but you know, this will be the consequence of it. So, um, so but the thing is that when when such people are there, um, it'll this will help us to. You know, relate to them, and yes, you know, what if they change? So we can't change them, but what if your action changes them, transforms them? Right? They could be the most toxic people ever, 
but what if your action or your response changes them right yeah so yeah so that is what i would say okay anything any 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 other questions anything else what do you think do you think it will help it's practical possible yeah which one hammer huh? which one <laughs> in hammer the situation mean more than that of the relationship yeah Mm. What yeah. if they get offended? Yeah, yeah. They take us wrong. Yeah. So it spoils mm. like our relationship. It affects our relationship. True. So that's the that's the danger, no? So when we uh, people get offended, people might misunderstand. Um, but we are you're doing all is possible in your part. At the end of the day, you should be able to say, "Hey, I did everything, right? I did everything possible, and yet change did not come." So if you can, if you can say that. Honestly, that's great. Right. So you've done everything possible. Yeah, that's a mistake. <laughs> that's a, so they hesitate too? Mm. Yeah, that's a, that's the thing. You know, in my own life, I've hesitated correcting people and it's bounced back so badly. And then uh, years after that, I realized, oh, I should have, for them, you know, it 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 it, uh, it, it was actually led to their destruction, you know. So, um, I mean, destruction is a strong word. Some not so nice things happening in their lives. So then I realized, yeah, I should have corrected it. I was just being nice, very user friendly, <laughs> you know, um, just saying the right things. No, I think we need to be able to share the truth. Truth hurts sometimes, but we need to be able to. That's why scripture talks about speaking the truth in love. Right? So, yeah, so that's uh, this. Mm -hmm. No, that's why we need to communicate the whole thing properly. And uh, so why are they thinking that they are correct, right? Which means we have not told them that hey, this is wrong. Okay. Uh, um, this is, I mean, we are we're just talking hypothetically, but we're saying, you know, suppose there is a situation where what they did, they felt was right. And then you know it is not wrong because that is, you, you know, it is wrong because. That is not what you agreed upon. So, which means we need to be able to share and tell them that hey, this is what you're supposed to do. This is what we agreed to do, and that did not happen, right? So that is why I'm saying that you know what you that was wrong. And so, you know, I, I think uh, we need to understand that. And because of that, you know, I, I still respect honor, whatever. But there are these things that need to happen. Okay, so you know. So about this whole thing about relationship, uh, it means that sometimes, let's say in an organization, you might have to let go of your people. Okay, so let's say you said, hey, "This is, I respect you, I love you," but, and we have spoken about this several times, but this has happened again, or it could be something very serious, and therefore, I cannot be partial. Right, uh, I still, you know, love you. I cannot be partial. Therefore, I have to let you go. And, 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 you know, uh, um, letting the never letting the situation mean more than the relationship is that even after letting go, you still maintain that relation. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. It's going to be difficult. But you still reach out and say, okay. 
why don't we meet for a coffee why don't we meet for a tea you know talk about it and believe me it, it's not easy but you will show that you mean you mean it you care for the relationship so it doesn't feel like you overlook no it, it's never that it's never it's never compromising the truth right there there could be grace extended but grace is extended after spelling out the truth right yeah because that's what the lord lord extended grace not saying you are not a sinner but he's saying hey this is where you messed up but despite that there is grace right so so the person also understands that um yeah so that's a difficult thing for all of us yeah okay okay let's look at uh, one more um i think this is the last one the elevator principle which means we lift up people and uh, sincerely encourage them right build them up and not put them down okay so be an encourager be an uh, barnabas in the lives of people okay um like maxwell talks about um, you know some people add something to our lives we enjoy them some people take away we tolerate them some people multiply we value them some people divide something in your life we avoid them right he talks about this so be a the, the elevator is talking about a lift right uh, elevate something lift people up okay um okay jackin as has a question uh, is leadership influence a favor from god looking at the lives of joshua and nehemiah yes leadership is uh, definitely a gift as we see in um, uh, do we see, see it in romans 12 um it is a membership gift right romans 12 and uh, verse 8 says he who leads with diligence is just talking about you know uh, mem- having gifts differing verse 6 romans 12 verse 6 having then gifts differing according to the grace given to us so it is one of the grace gifts that is given to the body so there could be people who are graced in this manner so um yeah so that is a, it is a gift right so um okay your your question is the entire people obeyed and did what joshua commanded to do even after the death of moses yeah but they could all always be some detractors like um you know even in joshua's time or in during moses time there will always be some who you know, who did not obey wholeheartedly that is always the case right um but yes uh, the, the joshua is that people talked about i mean people came together and said you know be courageous uh, uh, only you know um, only be strong and be courageous and we are with you and so on right uh, but they could always be one of two what detractors and um, yeah okay so yeah okay so we'll stop here and um, yeah we'll catch up next class okay thank you